Hey everyone, this is the Twins with the Grand Old Time cast, and I am sitting here with the soon-to-be Lieutenant Evans, and uh, she's going to give us a little brief on her life experiences. So thanks for coming here, Evans, and uh, we'll just start off with who are you, where are you from, and uh, what made you want to join the Army, of all things? Okay, I'm Shaylee Evans. I'm from Maldro, Oklahoma, and I joined the Army for the medical experience and to pay for college. And I stayed in the Army because of all the experiences and opportunities it's offered me and all the people I met. Okay. So, uh, Muldrow, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Where on earth is that? <laughs> it's like right by the border of Fort Smith, Arkansas. Okay. So, you're a ways mm -hmm. away. Yeah. Okay. So, you grew up there. Is it just kind of like a country rural town? Really like, small town. Really small town. Yeah. About how many people? I think 3,000 is population. Okay. Yeah. okay, that's not bad. So you knew every, everybody knows each everybody other knows and everybody, everybody knows each other's business. <laughs> and, okay, very cool. So you grew up in that small town vibe. You decided to join the Army for the schooling and the benefits mm -hmm. um, to also get some medical experience as well. Right. So how old were you when you actually took the plunge? I was 17 when I enlisted. So mm -hmm. I had to go to RSP for nine months before I graduated and then went to basic training. Okay, so RSP for nine months, and for those who don't know, RSP is like the readiness sustainment program for, uh, or recruit sustainment program, I guess. So as a young high school student, you can actually join the Guard with your parents' permission, of course, at yeah, the age of 17. <laughs> and then you, once a month, just like uh, a, a typical National Guard soldier, they'll go and drill at this RSP location. Where was your location at? So due to COVID, it was weird. They had to like combine some and then separate some in a different fashion. So it was like less people here, more people, you know, social distancing and whatnot. Uh -huh. So I was at, um, it's in, starts with a W. I was supposed to be at Sand Springs. I think maybe Wagner. Is there one there, an armory there? Nah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. I'm not sure either. <laughs> I know it starts with a W, but it's like an hour away from Aldro. So gotcha. I just drove to this random armory. Yeah. Got an hour to go there. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. It was closer than the one that they wanted me to go to. So Sand Springs from Aldro was like even further. So yeah. it was nicer. So I guess, so as RSP, you kind of show up in the morning, you do your PT, and then most of the time it'll be what, death by PowerPoint? Right. It's so. teaching you land nav over and over again. Mm -hmm. Only on the board, though. Yeah, but I mean, they, they, I will be honest, like they taught me to march. They taught me mm -hmm. to do all kinds of stuff that made basic training loads easier. easier. Yeah. So I would say a lot of guard candidates are probably more more prepped to go to basic training than just your oh, average sure. like because active duty they'll just like enlist and boom they mm -hmm. send the next day yeah yeah they'll be gone and it, they have no idea what they're getting into and what's even cooler uh, we had talked about this before but you know it's when you go there to the guard uh if you're in the guard then you go to basic it's like hey you're getting that, that full-time pay while you're there but mm -hmm. we've already been snapping cashing right, checks you know? checks every month so everyone else is like all the kids like oh wow i got my first paycheck when you're mm -hmm. done with it's like We've already been collecting money, so, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like a huge deal to us. It's just, it's just going back to work. Yeah, so. just another job. Just FYI, you know, if you want to get some experience and you want to join the military, you can actually transition from the Guard to active, but uh, the Guard does a really good job of, A, paying you, and B, getting you prepped for basic training if you want to go. So I actually recommend it to young kids. Uh, mm -hmm. It's kind of like being in an after-school program, except you get paid to do it, and uh, but you have to do it <laughs> because <laughs> you you're <laughs> you signed on the dotted line. The government owns you now. Yeah. So yeah, that that's that's cool that you were a part of that program. Like I said, the, the, for the short time I was involved in it, I learned a lot. But mm -hmm. gosh, I was ready to be done, done. with it because I yeah. wasn't a seventeen to eighteen year old kid looking for something to do as an extracurricular. I was like, I just want to get to basic and get the heck out of here. Yeah. So, how old were you when you finally shipped off to basic? Training? I had just you... turned eighteen, like okay. two months before. All right. So, did you ever have to report back to the RSP, or did you just go? All the way through, you, you completed high school, then went to... I completed high school. I didn't do the, like, split thing, like, junior year. <laughs> I did, off, yeah. yeah, I completed it, but I did end up coming back. So you come back and you do your on-ramp drill. <laughs> but I had just missed, like, that month's section timing or whatever for to go to on-ramp. And so they were like, well, if you want to drill this month and, like, still get paid, you can just go back to Sand Springs and be, like, assisting, you know, the sergeants there. Yeah. And I was like, okay. So I showed back up to Sand Springs um, to RSP, and I wanted to do PT with them because I was like, you know, why not? So, but no one knows what you are. Like, they didn't see my yeah. U.S. Army fancy patch that I had on my arm um, <laughs> from PTs. And so they thought I was just one of the, like, trainees, yeah, over there. And so 
I was just like trying to show everybody at basically in PT. Nice. I'm like, I just got out of basic and AIT and the drill sergeant there, um, <laughs> he was doing like a burpee competition or something. And I kept telling him I beat him. He's like, if anyone can like get up faster than me. And I, I swear, like I got up faster than him, but <laughs> yeah, it was fun. And then he saw me like in uniform and he was like, oh, cause you're a gold phaser. That's why. Like, yeah, that is why. It's like, yeah, I, I, I already did all this stuff. <laughs> I'm not like the rest of these plebes here. Yeah, it was fun, though. That was a good time to go back and just, like, kind of full circle moment. Like, see, you know. Yeah, see it from the other side. See mm -hmm. it from on the other end. And even when I was there, like, you know, like, the kids who were still there and I would ask them things about how basic training was. And, you know, their eyes light up. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, I, I wow. have something on you. I can tell you I can tell you secrets that an old person like you doesn't know. It's like, yeah, you're right. I, I don't know anything about this life. So enlighten me. I want to hear your stories. And that's the thing. You, you have kids sit down and tell you, like, they're basically like you, their their eyes light up. They're like puppies. You know, it's like mm -hmm. I can't believe somebody wants to listen to what I have to say. It's Everyone because gets <laughs> excited and talking exactly. about it. Because when you're in the army, especially as a such a new recruit, like the mm -hmm. only people you listen to are the people who have an experience on you. So it's like all the sergeants like, there's nothing you can say to me that I don't already know. Don't yeah. talk to me private. So it, it's just kind of the way it is with uh, a lot of these uh, younger guys. Like they don't get to share their influence until somebody comes along that doesn't know at least something about basic training and then right. they then you know but once they um they go to their AIT mm -hmm. they, they're gone like they'll never go back to the RSP again because they're done done like yeah, so, hey as soon as you get out of that you go straight to your unit so. Mm -hmm. so uh you were 18 when you went to basic training completed how was basic training for you like uh, basic training was good I mean it was really difficult um it was like the first time I'd ever been away from family and friends for that period of time especially with no phone like not talking to them the whole time so that was difficult and I didn't even expect that part to be challenging for me I was like I'll be fine like I'm independent you know I could go and then I was like I miss my mom yeah. <laughs> so that was difficult but it was I mean it was good I learned a lot there and learned a lot about what I'm capable of and I think it was a really good start like first thing to do right when you mm -hmm. get into the real world after graduating high school so. yeah it was nice. Absolutely. And you never know how it's going to affect you like that mm -hmm. when the loneliness creeps in, like when you're away from family and home. Like for me, uh, I was mentally prepared to leave my parents, my friends, yeah. my family. But uh, when I made that final call, when you get there, it's like, hey, I've arrived to my basic training platoon. I'm safe. Yeah, I'm safe. <laughs> and I will not talk to you again. But a picture of my dog came up on my phone. Like, and that's that's when I that's what I was not right. Because, you know, it's like a dog is like a perfect reminder of home because mm -hmm. it's like the dog. The dog doesn't know why you're gone or why you're not there. But I just saw the face. And I was like, oh, that got me right in the feels for some yeah. reason. I was I was mentally prepped for everything like, so except ready. seeing that picture of my dog and be like she doesn't know why i'm not there <laughs> yeah, it's like sad. dang it man like why am, why is this getting me worked up but i i, I held it together <laughs> i held it together thank goodness but yeah it's so basic training uh, any memorable stories like anything that stands out or uh... from basic training. i think every day had some story with it because my drill sergeants were crazy but I do remember like a funny one of these birds would always fly into the power line and they'd just blow up and scare everyone and we'd all like hit the ground thinking contact, contact. <laughs> the drill sergeants were messing with us, but that was funny. There was one time that it was kind of towards the end too and someone, people wouldn't fill up their camelbacks. Like their camelbacks would be half empty or blown with air in them to look full and they would come around yeah. and check. And so too many people just didn't have full camelbacks one day. And so we all were like formed up. I think this went on for about three hours. Like, I wish I was kidding that we would all in a line, dump our camelbacks on our feet, like on the ground. So our boots are soaking wet mm -hmm. and go and fill them again. Everyone like that takes like a long time for everyone to individually yeah. fill it off of one water buffalo. Everyone gets back in formation. I'm like, surely this is the last time, right? Everyone dump your camelbacks and we'd all dump them again. And we did that like enough times to last three hours. And then he made us pretend that the camelback was a big fish. Like once they were all full and we had to like squat and pretend we were fishing and just that we just caught it and had to hold it. Oh but it's, yeah, so that was fun. Uh. It was funny though. It was hard not to laugh. Like a lot of points was just really hard not to laugh during good times. Yeah. The, the one time that stuff like that will actually happen to you, basic training, like it's just the ridiculousness. Cause you have kids who just think they can get away with murder while they're mm -hmm. there. And you, again, uh, we had kids that would, you know, we, we come out and like, It'd be cold outside because I was there in winter, you know, it's yeah. like, like, everybody have your gloves on. And it's like, then that one kid, I lost my gloves. And then we're sitting there, it's like, see if we can get away with it. You know, and yeah. like everyone's just sitting there. It's like, 
Finally, the drill starts are looking. They they see that one kid. And they're like, "Take your effing gloves off!" And you're like, "Everyone has a day." No, off. and then they're making you do push-ups on the cold concrete, and you're just <laughs> like, "This blows!" <laughs> like yeah. same thing with like the beanie little beanies we had. <laughs> Someone doesn't have that one. It's pretty obvious. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the worst is if like you were out in the field and they're like, "Okay." You can wear your PCs if everyone has them, and you're like, yeah. Yes, and someone doesn't <laughs> yeah. have theirs. Like, we were supposed to bring our patrol caps with I'm us? Like, ah. <laughs> Idiot. Why would you do this to us? It's the worst. That happened at OCS, too. Oh, yeah. There was of, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the only one like similar like that, the OCS that I had, was remember we ran out of canteens. It was the morning. We were <laughs> the Day one. Dry shaving. So I'm out there like just putting canteen in my canteen cup trying to shave so I don't have one canteen filled. And the sergeant rolls over and is like, everyone chopper. Camping? Yeah, <laughs> sergeant chopper comes out and he literally ties all of our canteens together, everyone that didn't have one full. And he may just go, now go quack quack all the way to the <laughs> all the way to the can to the water truck and back. And we were doing that, holding our, all of us holding on to the crease of our, yep, of our uh, canteens. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Yeah. I was yeah. laughing the whole time. It's hard not to laugh that entire time. It's like, don't laugh. It's not funny. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. And, and again, that's what you do. Like, you hold, like, you, everything retrospectively is hilarious. Like, you'll look at it, like, why you're there and why you're doing it. It's mm -hmm. like, man, this blows. And then you look back, you're like, nah, it really wasn't that bad. Yeah. Like, my first CO said, like, he was like, the harder and more difficult something is, the more memorable it'll be and the more you'll cherish it as you go on in your career. And it's like, yeah, that's really true. I mean, that rings are so true to mm -hmm. everything I've experienced. Like if you shy away from difficulty, if you shy away from, if you just take the path most traveled instead of taking right. the path less traveled, you're going to regret it because if there's an opportunity to, to jump into leadership, if there's an opportunity to take control or command of something like do it because mm -hmm. you know, a, you're in a training environment. So what does it matter? If you fail, right. nobody's going to get hurt. You might, that's they might the do some push-ups, you yeah. know, but uh, it, it's all good. So never shy away from discomfort. So pushing on from basic training, mm -hmm. uh, you go on to AIT, obviously. So you, you came back home before you went to AIT, or did you go straight no, to AIT? No, we had graduation and family day mm -hmm. at basic, and then we I stayed over like one more night, I think, at basic, and then went the next day to AIT. Yeah, we bussed to Fort Sam Houston from Fort Leonard Wood. And yeah, we were at Fort Sam Houston for four months for the combat medic. And how was that? It was better than basic training, I think. I think it's because you get a little more freedom. They trust you like a little more, not a lot, but just some. And you kind of feel like a person again. Mm -hmm. um, it's just nice, I think, learning your actual job that you want to have in the military. Like learning medical things was really cool. It's the whole reason I enlisted was the medical experience. Mm -hmm. So it felt really nice to be at that point where I was actually learning how to do my job and then it's such a cool job to have honestly like learning how to save someone in you know a traumatic situation it's pretty cool really rewarding for sure absolutely i mean putting hands on someone and bringing them back from the brink is mm -hmm. uh, about the coolest thing you can do yeah it is super cool and i got my emt license out of that too so that was cool yeah out and get that so yeah i mean that's that's another reason why a lot of people should join the military it's like i mean mm -hmm. they're gonna give you hands-on medical training it'll be under a stressful environment stressful conditions and it's not gonna be that clean like you know all the girls that i knew in college like oh, i'm gonna be a nurse you know and they're just <laughs> going through and reading the books and they go it's like now we're gonna stick ivs and stuff it's like no nah, they're gonna they're gonna put you under some stress in yeah. the in the army i remember our iv class it was like inside the classroom and we would set all the mannequins up on the ground and then they had like smoke going off in there and then they played like on the speakers just like war sounds it's like mm -hmm. it was definitely should they turn the lights off that was fun too. oh gosh yeah. that uh, like figure it out that's the level of difficulty how yeah. do you figure it out in the dark you just we you have just our little red lights okay so we got to start ivs with just red lights in the field and like for practice in the rooms and stuff all right i think the worst part of that is you use each other like for like practice Ugh. so every day you're getting like four ivs started on you oh, that which is like if you don't like needles kind of rough well, yeah. <laughs> every day you're just facing that fear you know no kidding. but it takes a certain mentality to want to go into that field anyway so mm -hmm. i think they had better made peace with that yeah, particular problem just be okay with it at yeah. some point they make you just use the red lights so that way if you start making somebody bleed no one knows right? <laughs> yeah. nothing's warm no it's not <laughs> uh, yeah. i just peed my pants that's all <laughs> 
But yeah, no. So you got, uh, was there any particularly memorable experience or funny things that happened while you were at AIT? In AIT, I think a really cool experience was like in the field, there was the drill sergeant was trying to put us in a really stressful environment. We had 360 security and I was senior medic at the time. And I got to start an IV with just red light and I got it and I felt super cool after that. Yeah. I was like, yeah, let's go. So that was really cool. Um, just a lot of funny moments at AIT because we were always doing something goofy. But <laughs> one of our drill sergeants, we we liked this ongoing joke of that he had a new drill sergeant hat. And so anytime we saw him, we were like, oh, my gosh, like, drill sergeant, I love your new hat. Like, it looks so good. And then it's, like, raining outside. And we're like, are you going to get your new hat wet? And I think it was just so funny how aggravated he got about it because he was like, <laughs> it's not new. I've been a drill sergeant for years. <laughs> and, yeah, so anytime it would rain, we're like, Drill sergeant, you need to put something over your hat so it doesn't get wet. It's new. And he's like, <laughs> I hate y'all. <laughs> like, no. He that, was funny, though. That is so true. Like, like, because at some point, we live under the mercy of drill sergeants. But mm -hmm. I got to the point where I was like, I decided, no, the drill sergeants are going to live at my mercy. You get to the point where you want to mess with them, too. Yeah. yeah. Like, you mess with me, I'm going to mess with you back. Absolutely. So there was a, our favorite drill sergeant from basic training was, uh, he was Ram. And uh, what I would do is I'd always say, I'd go up to him, I'd hit, you know, parade rest. And I'd be like, <laughs> good morning, drill sergeant. And I'd, I'd be like, drill sergeant. And then he'd say, what? what? And I'd say, good morning, drill sergeant. And I said that every day. I'd say it every time I saw him. So yeah. it was in his afternoon, if it was morning, if it was evening. I said it to him all the time. And it got to the point where he finally got, he goes, if you ever want to talk to me again, you have to do 20 push-ups for every, every time. time you speak to me. And I said, done. So I'd go so to him every day, and then I'd be like, drill sergeant. And he'd be like, are you sure you want to do this? And I'd be like, good morning, drill sergeant. And he'd be like, drop. <laughs> and then it got to the point where I'd also wish him, when he was the one that came in and said good night to us, mm -hmm. I would, uh, I'd always say, good night, I love you. And he would leave, and he did this to you too when you were at basic. <laughs> What's fun about me and him is like we actually went to the same basic training company really? at different times. Oh, that's crazy. At Fort Jackson, which is huge. There are yeah. tons of battalions Don't there. Don't know how you did that. Uh, yeah, no, and so, but I went after him, literally the, the cycle after him. So mm -hmm. when I got off the bus, every drill You're sergeant like, You're knew back? me. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. So, I mean, I had all the drill sergeants walk up to me. He goes, Watson. And he goes, are you... When you have a twin, and I was just like, I do, and they were like, oh, and literally they're all like, imagine like going they to like go high crazy. school and like your your older sibling or somebody played yeah. football there. It's like, oh, this is so and so so bad. That's what it was like. I, I was bet. like, it's crazy. So like finally, uh, I'd say I love you and good night after he left, and then he'd always kick that door back open, mm -hmm. and my locker was the first locker in the base. So like I'm right there next to the door, and he just look in there, and he'd be like, down again. So I'd always have to do push ups right before bed too. So, so funny. That's what I like doing. Like you hold them hostage instead yep. of letting them dictate the pace. Like they oh. have to be there too. Yeah. I'm like, like, you I... have to be here just as much as I have to be here. Exactly. Exactly. So that's what I did. It's like like yeah. I'm not trapped in here with you. You're trapped in here <laughs> with me, drill sergeant. We would have to do we'd run around our buildings like for PT. We'd just run a lot and the drill sergeant they would run the opposite way, just like on the other side checking to make sure everyone's still running and still okay. And every time they would pass, we'd be like, good morning, drill sergeant. Good morning, drill sergeant. So yep. like 50 times a morning, just all the laps around. So funny. Absolutely. That's the, funny to mess with them. It's those little things that like help you get through the day. It, is. it keeps you going. Because we ordered a fun. flag with their face on it. Because y'all order stuff at your No. Yeah, so what? we could place Amazon orders because we were there for four months and they like allowed it. So we ordered. Yeah, this must have been AIT. Yeah, AIT. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. That, 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 makes, that makes more sense. Yeah. A flag with the drill sergeant's face on it. And That's they have sick. to check you what you order. So like we would unfold it and we were like, here it is. <laughs> it was like, oh <laughs> my god. That's awesome. It was so funny. So, yeah, AIT definitely is the more chill version of basic training. They treat you like I think mm -hmm. Ivy said it the best. Like whenever we did an interview with him, he's like, oh, you you're kind of not treated like crap the entire time because yeah, you're, not as much. You're almost a soldier. Like you're only officially a soldier whenever you get your uh, like your yeah your uh, MOS complete when you get that done. It's like when you're at basic training, it's just like. You're the Millie Vanilli of soldiers. You're <laughs> almost a soldier because we don't know what your job is just yet. Right. Like, you so. have no purpose, actually, yet. And that's what sucks about being in 09 Sierra. We are we have lived in that limbo state since we got done with basic training. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's just great. We came, we got done, come straight back here. We're in the pre-OCS program and then jumped into the OCS program and then boom. Like That's just crazy. Nothing but a training environment for mm -hmm. the past, like, two years now. Wild. So now we're no finally done. Yeah, no yeah. real army. We've been in a training environment the whole time. That's what's so funny. We're so different. <laughs> yeah. So like as we were getting ready to ship out to uh, phase one for OCS, yeah. like uh, Captain Stosher was like, yeah, he's funny. Hey, like he, 
uh, they were the cadre was having some conversation. They're like, "Who do you think's gonna do well? Who do you think's gonna?" Mm-hmm. Do? And like, they were like, "What about the twins?" You know, like we're yeah, like we're older, like in our thirties. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, hey, like what are they gonna? And he just looked over and goes, "Oh, they'll be fine." And, and they're like, what, "What do you mean they're gonna be fine?" And he was like, "Well, they don't know any better. They've never been treated any. Like they've been treated like crap their entire career. They're like they're to gonna go there that. and they're gonna go in there. Like, oh, it's mm-hmm. like we're back at basic training." And they, for me and him, it's like, yeah, this just like going back to basic training, except you have more responsibility. Yeah, it is more responsibility, which I think maybe that's good, like in a sense, because mm-hmm. it is weird. I will say it was really weird to go from, um, like you know, your normal unit. I got to be a squad leader for like a short period of time there because they knew I was like leaving to go to OCS. I think they were trying to give me that experience, and so it's just weird to go from like actual they trust you, like they're giving you you know these tasks to do and. You're just, you know, a normal soldier in the guard doing your job to write back to you're nothing. Yeah. You know, everyone hates you. <laughs> like, it's like, are you sure you've been in the army before? I know. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, for a few years, actually. <laughs> yeah. So and that's the way it was. Like, I mean, I've watched a lot of OCS videos where like they'll be yeah. like, dude, there are people that quit day one well, because of the smoking. A6- a seven yeah. uh, accelerated OCS like so much prior experience, which is great. Like that helped us so much. But it's they struggled in the sense of like. One, going from enlisted to officer, it's yeah. a lot different. And just, like, going back to not being in charge, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. back to just a trade-off environment, they hated it, you could tell. Yeah. It's an adjustment, but they did really well. Like, yeah, and that's what's amazing is, like, I remember just listening to Phase 1, all the NCOs were just like, this is crazy. I've stupid. never been treated this badly before. <laughs> yeah. This is nuts. Yeah. And, just, and me and Trevor's like, really? Yeah. Like, like, this is cool. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> one coming back in the barracks like i have never been this treated this poorly in the army in my entire yeah. life so and I was that's like, great you... and I was like yes so we're jumping a little bit ahead of ourselves so you finish ait yeah you get graduated so you come back how was life at your unit how long how long were you at your unit i was at the 120th mcas which is over in like broken arrow i think is the address it has um and it was great i love my unit honestly i think your first unit will really like shape your perspective of the army and i got really lucky with mine i loved it so much like everyone there is medical since a medical unit and like there's a bunch of paramedics there we have like providers and stuff there too and it's just so cool i met some of my like closest friends there actually got like my civilian job because i work as an emt i started working with one of them too at his um like ems service that he worked at so it was lots of fun like i really it was really hard to leave actually yeah i loved all of them so much and it's like Every single drill we're doing training, like, for medical. So it's like I just get to go and have fun with my friends and do stuff that I like to do every weekend. So drill was, like, something I look forward to, which apparently is not everyone's experience <laughs> in their unit. <laughs> yeah, But apparently. it is mine. <laughs> yeah, and that's it, – it's kind of amazing. Like, I, I, the sentiment I hear from actually most of the guys in our class mm-hmm. are pretty much identical to yours. Ivy loved his yeah. – I mean, his helicopter unit is just right up the road here. Really? So, uh, I mean, Babbitt really liked being his 42 Alpha. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I've heard that he liked that too. So whenever they like get thrown into these programs, I'm always shocked. I'm just like, why? Like what, what, like what drove you, know, you to join? Exactly. Type? So that, so I guess that's my follow up question to you is why did you it decide was, to take the officer leap? It was so hard to leave. And I talked to so many people in my unit about it first and they were all like, no, you shouldn't go. Like you should stay. <laughs> And then they're like, no, you should go. You should go. Like, we need officers, and you would be a good one. And it was just, I think I had such good examples of leadership at my unit. They just showed me exactly, like, what I would want to be. Because um, they just did nothing but inspire me when I was there. And I want to be a provider. <laughs> and so, like, talking to some of the providers and seeing their patient care, it was just, like, even more motivating for me to be that eventually and be that provider one day. And so an officer is, like, going to OCS was the best route because I didn't know about the gold program until, <laughs> until I was at RSU. <laughs> yeah, I was at RSU and then I talked to Sergeant Gonzalez there about it and I was like, that seems like a really good route to take and I would be an officer like this time next year and so I just kind of full sent it after I talked to, you know, a few people at my unit and Sergeant Gonzalez. I was like, you know what? I'm either going to do it or I'm not. So I just, I went to AT with my unit. Mm-hmm. So not last summer because last summer was OCS, but the summer before that was my last AT with my unit, and then I joined Gold. So I was really part of Gold very short period of time before I went to OCS. But yeah, I think the main pulling factor was just wanting to be one of the leaders that I had at my unit. Very cool. So yeah, the leadership inspires people to do better things or move on to uh, become leaders themselves. So yeah. 
I will say that it's really motivating meeting the vast majority of people I've met in the guard. Like they're all super hyper motivated people. For what it seems, I'm sure there are probably some some dirt bags <laughs> too. I just have yet to meet them. Right. But uh, yeah, it's it's really cool. So let's kind of get into the uh, nitty gritty of uh, OCS. <laughs> so you're in the GOG program for a little bit. Yeah. What pulled the trigger on going to Accelerated? Who kind of... So Gold is kind of set up for you to go to Accelerated because with school, like a full-time college student, you don't have time to go to like the mm -hmm. winter and like traditional can be a lot mm -hmm. for you like trying to do school at the same time. So to just like boom, all in one summer, like you're done, you know? And so um, I never really considered anything but Accelerated. It just seemed like the best option and it was the fastest one. So I was like, you know what? Why not? But it is kind of hard to get to accelerate, like to go. I didn't know that there were so many requirements to meet beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. So I was in gold for one semester, like at the school, and then you go to pre OCS. <laughs> so then I started drilling with pre OCS, and they were like, you have to pass this, 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 and all these things. And so it just kind of took it as a challenge because I was like, oh, you think like I can't pass those? And so then we just started like running, it was a big <laughs> part of it. Um, and like studying land nav and all these other things, which gold helped a lot with. Like yeah. that was our semester of studying land nav, so that helped. But yeah, so we just meet all the requirements, and then you have the sixty credit hours from school. So they're like, okay, go. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. It's kind of crazy. Uh, I mean, in traditional, we were sitting there with I think OC Johnson was mm -hmm. in our group, and like he was he was going to phase one with us, yeah. and and like he was reading through this that dang book that's sitting right there on that uh, counter at the mm -hmm. our uh, OC guide, oh, yeah. and he was reading through it, and thank God he did, because he, he's, oh my God, I don't have enough credit hours to go to this traditional program, and I was like, thank God you found out right before we loaded onto the bus, because he would have had they, a long drive home. Yeah, how did they not catch that before? I they did, they made the right change up. day of, like, oh. I mean, or that before that particular cycle, like, I was shocked, like, they go, because that's, crazy. that's what their understanding was, like, that's why the cadre was like, yeah, come on, and, go. and it's then like, he would have got back and not been able able to yeah oh go to phase one through nothing exactly that would have really sucked for him so thank god he read that and he's like hey i'll just uh, stay here it's like good call because that would have sucked call. driving up there and then yeah. being uh i mean i guess he would have just been a gopher while he was up there just doing stuff for cadra but still, still i wouldn't want to be up there in that heat if i didn't have to be there mm -hmm. and um so i guess we'll kind of go into the monotony of what a day looks like for uh ocs uh accelerated so you went to mm -hmm. is it north or south dakota south dakota south dakota mm -hmm. okay so my understanding is that south dakota is absolutely brutal like it it's is so bad. brutal so yeah so fort meade that's where you are in the whole first part besides phase three phase three is when you switch and go to rapid city so the majority of ocs my memory when i think of ocs is fort meade and it's very like tradition i think they keep their tradition which i think is really cool until you're doing all of their tradition that is not cool at all. Like the tree of knowledge. Oh, we had tree of knowledge. Did y'all have one of those? <laughs> yeah, we had tree of knowledge. Yep. Oh my gosh, it's the worst. Possibly the worst part of us, yes. But <laughs> they used it so much. And um, like a typical day, I would say you wake up, give you they give you a time that like right before you go to sleep the night before. And they only give it to leadership. So then leadership has to come wake everybody up at that time. Mm -hmm. And you don't really know what time you're getting up. You also cannot get up any time before the time that they give you because they'll be looking around and you'll get in a lot of trouble. So you can't like wake up earlier to prepare or anything like that. I just, I'd always wake up early under the guise, I got to go pee, which was always true. Right. I'm like, hey, I'm not going to wait here until no, 15 until minutes before. At, yeah. yeah, it's like, I'm going now. Yeah. And so we would try to do that too. We just get yelled at so many different times. But honestly, it was kind of worth it because you want to be at formation with your stuff. And so we did PT in the morning. So you'd get up. You have like, what, five minutes to get outside so everyone can get Basically. accountability. It's so weird how fast you can get ready when you need to get ready that fast. <laughs> um, go from awake to standing in formation with, like, your weapon and everything. Like, how to get here? Um, and then you'd run over to the place where we did PT, which was in front of the dining facility. And we would just do, like, prep drills and whatever leadership the night before I decided we were doing for PT that day, which could be anything. But mm -hmm. most of the time it was, like, some sort of running to prep us for the four mile or something yep. like that. And that would last about an hour, and then we would get back, we'd get like 10 minutes to change into OCPs, and then we'd come out, run back to breakfast, mm -hmm. like full kit, do the whole procedure for like taking your stuff off, do the exercise of the day, all the things, and then we'd finally, like, you've been up for hours at this point, get to eat breakfast, then you get out of there march back over because you don't run right after you eat which is the best part honestly. yeah i love yep. that rule that's my favorite rule and so we got to march to the schoolhouse and then you're in the schoolhouse all day long 
every 45 minutes coming outside to get smoked for like 10 minutes. Tack break. Tack break, yeah. <laughs> the worst because you had to report to the tack shack. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. And then back inside, and it's just like school the entire time, depending on what you're learning that day, which yep. changed every day. You zoom through stuff, like so oh, much material yeah. to cover. Mm-hmm. So it was like so much material, so little time. You're just like writing the entire time you're in there, and they're like, "Okay, tack break." Yeah, you'll be sitting in there. And you're like, "We've only been in here for like five minutes," and like you, the the tax, they'll say, "You guys got to go outside now for your tack break." And the, the only yeah. beautiful thing is the tax don't come into the building. They're not allowed to. Only the instructors yeah. are allowed in the building, and then you run back out. But really? it sounds like it's basically identical to what we had, except Our for the tax were in yeah. the building because they had the tax shack inside at the top oh. of the stairs. So, yeah, that was unfortunate. But they didn't come into our classroom ever. Like, that was very separate because they tried to keep your learning separate from your, like, stressed out because they're standing there, you know? Yeah, I'll never forget. They actually did not ever come into our building that that, uh, we had the classrooms in in Kansas. Like, uh, it it was – that was nice, but at the same time, they'd be waiting there at the door opening, and they were all yelling, like, get outside. Our classroom was always at the very end, so we're always the last class out Mm -hmm. uh, first platoon. But I'd just be smiling because they're just yelling, and I – because I always, I always know how ridiculous things are when they're happening. Yeah. So I have this big crap-eating grin on my face because I just know it's so I'm – like, I'm, like, I'm a 30, 33-year-old man <laughs> getting yelled at by a bunch of people wearing black hats. And I just remember the, the, the captain who was in charge of our platoon just goes, Watson, wipe that smile off your face. <laughs> it's just like I can't help it. It's so ridiculous. It is so thing. silly when you think about the situation itself because like, it's just like grown adults yelling at other grown adults for no reason yeah. <laughs> like you're not actually mad and i know you're not mad mm. you're just yelling because you have to and it's like and i'm just listening because i have to <laughs> like yeah yeah it's it's fun like i mean like don't get us wrong it's brutal mm-hmm. but again the harder something is the, the more you kind of yeah relish the experience and you look back on it with fond memories and, and it, once you can get past like what like the fact that they're yelling and just listen to what they're saying mm-hmm. it like changes everything honestly because like they're yelling and i'm like oh, why are they so like loud <laughs> like they're yeah. just so loud all the time but then i'm like you finally get to the point where you're listening and i'm like they're actually saying stuff that is helpful <laughs> it's like i need to know that so yeah like, and it yeah. also i mean it is a smart way to reduce the stress because like when you're in a combat zone i mean people mm-hmm. are going to be yelling and you actually yeah. need to focus and hone in on the words that they're saying mm-hmm. in that combat environment so yeah it that's what it's inducing like everyone's like oh there's no message to this method there's absolutely there a, method. There's a method for sure and it works like it's been known to work so yeah it was painful as it is like they definitely know how to get the job done. And we had some great tax in uh, South yeah. Dakota. Question, did you guys have to sing to your tax? We sing all the time. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay, so that's not surprising. So. How was your uh, your uh, your chow hall procedures? Did you guys ever sing during chow hall procedures? We, we didn't sing. We sang when they would say make way because this one tack really liked Aladdin. And we'd be like, make way. So oh, that, that's when we sang. But we did um, have joke of the day and like this weird little weather. Cause we had this guy who was, he was a weatherman. Like that was his job. Oh my gosh. Like, they ran with it. They loved it so much. And he did give us weather like forecast every, every day. It was great. This little voice that he does. Barometer meeting. And yeah. Reading. <laughs> like, that's exactly. He's like the cloud coverage today. And it's yeah. great. Um, but we had joke of the day and we had to laugh like, loudest we've ever laughed in our whole life and then they would do it again if they didn't like us laughing like we'd have to laugh harder and so like forcing yourself to just laugh so is just hilarious i'm like what are we doing like we look, need to be admitted at this point like yeah. we're crazy yes yeah, so. like hitting the table yeah. like, like it's so funny. so well the only thing i'd say that's kind of sucked for us was like Never, so we were at a, next to like a meat processing plant or something. Mm-hmm. So it's like there's civilians like at this. So yeah, we're, like, there's we're civilians doing the, all around. The chow and stuff. Like I feel it's so ridiculous so right now. Yeah. So there's like civilian houses on Fort Meade. Like I guess maybe they're not civilian houses, but like you know retired people, whatever. Mm-hmm. And their families, like their wife and kids, and they're walking <laughs> just like we're pulling, you know, 360 security, and I'm just like, but then these people are just taking their daily walk, you know, around yeah. this place, and I'm just like, what? Are you- what am I doing? <laughs> it's so it's so funny because like now I understand how Tom, you know, so my my grandpa, his best friend before he uh, passed away, he was talking mm-hmm. about how uh, how when he was he was stationed somewhere, he goes, well, he goes, I would never. He was an enlisted guy. He goes, I would never want to be an officer after he lived on base. He must yeah. have lived near where you're talking and about. You watch OCS. He could see the OCS because goes, they treated them so, so awful. Bad. It was crazy. I've never seen anybody treated so horribly in the military. So many people tell me too, like when I mention OCS, they're like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> like that's gonna be so bad. And I'm like, they really know how to make a name for themselves. Yeah. Like, yeah, they've been like this forever. So. You talk to an enlisted, it's like. 
you just wouldn't understand. <laughs> you just wouldn't get it. You just it's you won't so understand. bad. And they're like, oh, it's just like basic training, though. And I'm like, no, it's different. Like, it's so different. And it's the same time period, which is so weird, like the two months long. Mm-hmm. And But it's not basic training. I'm like, I would not ever do OCS again. Like, if you paid me, I'd probably do basic again. You know, like, it's a lot different. You just so got to rock a couple miles with a backpack on and get yelled at by a drill sergeant. For funny stuff. You, the thing is, you Nothing. can turn your brain off in basic training. Mm-hmm. Like, you just do what they tell you. Like, you blend in so easily. There's no blending in an OCS. Yeah. Like, they are going to know who you are. Like, yep. regardless. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's what I would say the big difference is. is uh, OCS is you actually have to be smart. Because yep. if you do anything stupid, like, they're on you. So fast. And not smart. Like, you don't have to be a genius to, to go through OCS. But you just have to pay attention. You have to be yeah. wired a certain way. You have to take in the actual information and retain it. Mm-hmm. And on top of retain it, put it to good use. Uh, yeah. So Because, I mean, the academic portion of OCS isn't no, really no. a joke. Like, especially with how little time you have to study. I guess accelerated specifically. Like, it's, I mean, it's not much. You really yeah. just got to listen in class and then take the test. Which, you do get to retake it, I guess, if you fail mm-hmm. once. You have one other time but still i mean no one wants to do that so you just try to pass the first time absolutely but yeah no it's definitely challenging like there's not easy tests i think call for fire was a big one people struggled with some some people struggled with and then the military exam and it's because call for fire we like one day it was like a few hours that we went over everything and then we took it that makes sense and that's what scared me about like the the accelerated program because mm-hmm. it's just like you you're only in that class for a couple of hours. Yeah, and... it's like boom, take it after yeah. like go eat chow and then come take it. We're like, we would know ahead of time what the tests and stuff so we could, could study. study out. We could study yeah. through the month, whether you studied outside for the right. month or not. But the one that actually killed the vast majority of candidates in our class was uh, the history, history exam because mm-hmm. it's so dense and there are paragraph long questions and, and then paragraph long on. answers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's kind of how ours was, too. Like, we had a few people fail that one, and then everyone passed on the retake, I think. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that was a, that was always a big one, too. Yeah. We did have a really good... Um, instructor? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I love, you, like, he's so good. They yeah, There has to be good instructors. Like, our instructors were fantastic here. Like, yeah, I think he actually, he'll be our speaker for our... Uh, oh, really? Mm-hmm, yeah, that's Captain great. Taylor. He, that's going to be awesome. But... Uh, yeah. He's good. Um, but it sounds kind of like the phase one... For you and us is similar. So did they break it up into phases? So we or had is it... phase one, phase two alpha, phase two bravo, and then phase three. Okay, so phase two, so kind of like what I was talking about the other day when they abridged, like you break it up into two segments of phase two. So, yeah. so, so did it? Did they kind of change the mentality within phase two, or was it still pretty brutal all throughout phase you know, two? I think from phase one we just got so like, oh, we're almost to phase two, like let's go, and we just maybe got a little too excited for phase two. Because if I had to pick one day that was the worst day of OCS, it was the first day of Phase 2 Alpha. <laughs> like, it was the worst day. And I think it's because we wanted so bad for it to not be Phase 1 anymore. And then it was just us in Master Sergeant Faust. And, like, love him to death, but... Oh my I've gosh. heard this name before, too. He, he, like, killed us. Like, basically. Maybe just... I took it crazy. But it was the tree knowledge is what it was all day long. Like, oh, my gosh. All day long. And I was just so like, wow, we're never going to make it out of phase one. Like, we're just never going to. But it did. I mean, it did get better. It's also the new tax. The first few days of every new phase is going to be yeah. because they have, to prove, to, them. They have to prove themselves mm-hmm. and make, you know, they're not pushovers. They're not just your phase two tax that are chill, you know, which I get. I understand. But we always knew the first two days of every phase is going to suck. Yeah. And then it gets better. And so, Phase 2 Alpha wasn't great. I mean, it was better than Phase 1, I guess. Yeah. Phase 2 Bravo was good. It was good. It was better. We were more focused on academic stuff. And then Phase 3 was, they did switch pretty well into the mentor. There was a few that still wanted to just, like, make us do dumb stuff. But at that point, we were like, we're almost out of here. Like, we'll yeah. do your dumb stuff. Yeah, so whatever. We took it like a champ, I think. But everyone gets cranky in the field, so. So, uh, I guess I'll have some... Nitty go in a little deeper on the phase two stuff. So mm-hmm. I get I guess it's kinda of similar to basic training whenever you had new drill sergeant cycle and you'd be like, yeah. oh, screw these guys because you don't yeah, know anything like, about them. We know yeah. more than y'all do about this place. We've mm-hmm. been here longer. Yeah. That's how we felt, but you don't get it, you don't even know our rules. You're trying to make new rules, but we've been doing it this way. And that was aggravating, like just having to adjust to them basically yeah. every two weeks, all of us because they also switch platoons. So we're adjusting to each other, oh. adjusting to them. Yeah, they shuffled us as much as they physically could, I think. Yeah. Like, we didn't know anybody. But by the end of it, you knew everybody, yeah. like, in the whole company, which is really nice. So I do like the way they did that. But, yeah, every two weeks, like, whole new squads, whole new platoons. You, 
don't work well with these people because you just met them. Yeah. So I guess we never did a tree of knowledge again after we left phase one, but I will say phase two, the first drill of phase two was pretty brutal. Like, I mean, they, Mm -hmm. like, we came back and we were just like, we did it. We were out of phase one. You know, and like, nope. Very similar to you. It's like, they show, like, you know, they just go, you just have a report time and that's about all we had, you know? So we just get to the RTI at OKC and then like, you know, you hear come the black hats, you know, and you're just like, I don't know either of these. I, I recognize the chief, but yeah, I didn't recognize the other it. black hat there because he wasn't at phase one with us. So I'm just mm-hmm. like, I don't know who this guy is. But it's just like, why aren't your rooms in perfect order? It's like, uh, we didn't know we were supposed to have them in perfect order. We yeah. just were told to report here. You know, it's like, get these rooms in. And then I'm a smart ass too. So like, I, it doesn't help. It's like, so like we're low crawling through like the parking lot and like mm-hmm. crawling up a hill over by the RTI. And then, <laughs> you know. We come back in, and he goes, what did you learn while you were out there? And I, of course, I could not help myself, but I was just like, ah, I learned that the grass is freshly mowed out there right now. Not the right, not the right answer. Wrong answer. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he wanted to say uh, something. Uh, he, said, he said right answer, but not the answer I'm looking for. Yeah. <laughs> God, yeah. The answer was attention to detail, I'm sure, but uh, mm-hmm. I did not give that answer. But That's yeah, great. it sounds like phase two kind of kicks off the same way regardless. We are in, yeah. you know, I didn't do treat knowledge ever again after phase one. but. They uh, kept- I mean, they kept that until we left Fort Meade. They nice. just loved the idea of it. I think, honestly, they were really trying to get us ready for the four mile, too, which I appreciate, but, yeah, you know. But, and that's the other thing, too, is, like, so we were we had to plan for our drill outside of drills. So it's, mm-hmm. like, it's, it's like being normal. So she's in the environment the whole time. Yeah. Like, she never leaves. And we have to go home, and we have to plan how our drill – like, we have the schedule, and we have the counter, but then we have to – execute everything we're supposed to do we have to make sure everybody's doing their jobs we have to sign water details is that who's in leadership that does that at yeah the time? absolutely so you, yeah that would be a lot different than the way we do it mm-hmm. so it's it and then you know you have sometimes guys would be like show up and we'd be like hey you know it's like drills this weekend and then they'd be like it is and it's like you're like Visual get your butt real. here like yeah. now dude so you have that you know because people are i mean life catches you you know it's mm-hmm. like hey you gotta study for this test but it's like i'm working here i'm doing other things mm-hmm. it's like you get distracted for sure so it that's why a lot of us were like, we probably should have just gone accelerated because it would just. It's nice mm-hmm. in the sense of you do, you're so locked in. Like you're in the military mindset and mm-hmm. you don't have to switch back and forth. It's not nice in the sense of you're away from family and friends, you know, just like basic type of thing. And it's like the physical por- part of it is that you're always sore. Like there's no recovery and there's a lot of physical events you have to do to graduate. Oh, and so there's just no recovery. You have to be able to do it all back to back, essentially. And then mentally, same thing. Like there's no time to study, so yeah. it's just back to back test. Percent. I mean, she put it perfectly right there. Like it, if you're in there, it's brutal. There's no resting. There's yeah. no. And if you're injured at any point during like, the phase, like it's awful. Yeah. That's why the vast majority of guys in our class who mm-hmm. were at North Dakota or uh, South Dakota. Like, the year before you went, like, they, get hurt. they, they got hurt. Like, I mean, yeah. Ivy tore his meniscus while he it's was there. It's like an immediate, like, yeah. there's no way you can, there's no recovery time. Yeah. So like, if you don't, play, like, like he literally was walking on his torn meniscus for three days. He said, do, if like, you make it to phase two yeah. without, With like, the, like mm-hmm. you can make it and we'll put you in the traditional. But if you don't make it to then the you end of this, repeat, yeah. you're going back. And he was like, screw that. I'll, I'll walk, walk on this it. torn meniscus and be slow as keg. The only thing they can give you is a walking profile. And they will do those sometimes for six hours. Like, you have six hours uh, to, to feel better. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, we know that that's not possible. Like, the corpsman there as our medics, like, we know that. But it's, like, the environment that we're in, like, you just have to figure it out, basically. God. And, like, that's what so I think Sergeant Walker was trying to get his point across before we all, like, left. It's, like, you don't get hurt because there's no, like, recovering from that. Like, you're just going to be hurt and hopefully you can still finish because yeah. there's no, fin- you know. Yeah, I, again, there is zero other than the you get your one retest. Like, mm-hmm. there's no forgiveness in this no, environment. No. It's absolutely yeah. brutal. It's absolutely insane. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible. Obviously, we all did it, mm-hmm. and I don't think any of us are probably the best, you right. know, ruckers <laughs> or runners or uh, in this room. But yeah, we all did it, and we're probably middle of the pack type people. I would imagine. Like, mm-hmm. I was never first. I was never last. Yeah. But uh, somewhere in between. But it, it's it's doable, but it's brutal. Mm-hmm. And uh, so. It sounds like, you know, you did PT every morning all throughout phase two, except you just had your standard curriculum you would go in and learn for that particular yeah. segment. At what point did they start kind of getting into the sticks lane stuff? Was that just in segment B? It was, yeah, I think it was phase two Bravo, maybe the second week of phase two Bravo, <laughs> that we really started diving into just like the PowerPoint part of the sticks lanes but they didn't hit on that long before they were our instructor specifically was like let's just go outside and like do battle drills because it wasn't stick lanes yet but we were going over battle drills before we went to the field and stuff and so 
we were working with our little templates we had for the <laughs> um like flipping the orders and stuff we had really good template for that that they gave us the shells yeah the okay. shell yeah. yeah and so that was really nice to have because they just provided that for us and it's one that they had made from previous years i guess um just that accelerated that they all agreed on and it was a really good one i think we all did really well with it and we brought it back too and have given it to gold and stuff to use but nice yeah yeah we really like that one and we just dove straight into like battle drills and then really just kicked it off like they would just read it to us and we would get what we've got and we'd all brief it to each other like we'd all just take turns doing it get practice of saying it and just repetitions like we did it every single day for weeks before we actually went to the field nice yeah, yeah. that's that's perfect i mean that's what needs to happen like it mm -hmm. for us again you know we do it a month and then we come back like oh we are Forgot, we are yeah. rusty yeah so that is the hard part you know like they're in again they're in that environment accelerated might be better for just keeping that uh that in but mm -hmm. again traditional if you're looking for it to be more if you want to experience what's going to be like actually at your unit yeah. that might be the way to go and that's kind of where me and him were at where we go this is what's going to like the way uh i guess Whenever we were about to ship to basic, that's how uh, Captain Stosher, or he was Lieutenant Stosher at the time, but yeah. uh, he was like, it's like an internship program. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ooh, that sounds like it could be really beneficial. Because it's like, you know, you follow the officers around, they teach you how to mm -hmm. do stuff, and it's like, you see the job from the actual perspective on the ground instead yeah. of just being there and being brutalized the entire time. <laughs> Have their benefits. Again, I... Right. Part of me was like, I made a big mistake not going to federal or going mm -hmm. to the accelerated program, so... Yeah. But yeah, and then you go to phase three, and then it's all stick lane stuff. It's, it's all field, mm -hmm. all stick lanes, and that's just, you breathe. Like, yeah. infantry officer is what you feel like. You yes, know? yeah. Which is cool. I mean, it was it was a good time. Everyone gets cranky in the field, especially when you're there for over... Two you know, months, yeah. Yeah, like, over a whole week there. Like we still had three more days, or two more days. Um, So yeah, everyone was, like, not on their best mood, I guess, by the end of it all. It was just really hot. Like, that was the hottest days that we were up there. It got to 103 in South Dakota when we were in the wow. field. So we were struggling, to say the least. But, I mean, I think we did really good at keeping each other, like, up for what it was. And a lot of people passed, like, the first go yeah. of stick lanes. Like, we had very few that needed to redo it. And then the, even the people who redid it, like, their squad really helped them, like, yeah. when they were out there. So... So I guess here's so same for us. Like you know, we go out there. Except we, we I guess it's because you were there the entire time for that mm -hmm. two months. So I imagine people were just like sick and ready to go home. Mm -hmm. and the, the thing about traditional when we went to phase three, the spirits were really high basically the entire time. Like everybody was excited. There was no real. Well, we had traditional coming. Yeah. So ah. I think that might have been our riff a little bit. Yeah. Too, it's working with the traditional because the traditional came in super happy, and I was like. I kind of appreciated it. I was like, it's a good new faces mm -hmm. and they're in a good mood. <laughs> like it really yeah. brings us up. But some people were like, shut up. Like yeah. you have not been here. Like yeah. this place sucks. Yeah. You don't get it, man. You don't like, understand. It, this is awful. It, yeah. It, I it, understood yeah. that too, but it was like, but which way can you look at it? You know, you can yeah. either be happy or you can be Yeah, upset. you know, it's a choice. You know, here either way. Yeah. Being, being happy or sad is a choice. Like mm -hmm. if you're going to, you're in that body. You chose to be in the military. Don't drag everyone down like i mean especially as an officer like mm -hmm. your job is i mean you have platoon sergeants who probably have more experience than you could ever forget hope to have in the military right. who are going to basically be in charge of the platoon your job should primarily be to keep up their morale and yeah. keep them going like it's not for like, sure you, you don't want to hammer people down so it's like if you're in that environment i know you especially for the accelerated guys like mm -hmm. keep your keep your spirits up because that's going to be brutal at the end there yeah especially and... for people who are struggling to get their go because mm -hmm. if you're in a bad mood and that kid gets a no-go it's like hey i'll do whatever i can to help, help you, you pass and we got to keep your spirits high if you're the negative yeah. nancy it's like dude i don't give a crap whether or not you pass or fail like it's not up to me don't care either yeah don't be that blue falcon don't be that dude that makes that kid twice as nervous because he's working with someone who's got a chip on their shoulders like i got my go screw you right and that's we luckily we didn't have that issue too much of people who got it and didn't want to help others traditional came in like super like wanting help you know they didn't come in super hot like i think a lot of people expected that for them to be like i know this and this and this and this but they came in like please tell me everything you know like you know the tax you know how they're gonna grade we just got here and we're testing like tomorrow and I was like, we all, st like, we stayed up and we did classes overnight with traditional of, like, how to use our templates that we're using and shells and stuff. And so, I don't know, like, I think we had a really good relationship, especially, like, you get to know somebody with nine days in the field and oh, squad yeah. level stuff. We had, we had a lot of traditional, we had, like, four of our squad was traditional. We only had, like, three or four of us that were accelerated, so 
it was a full 50 like cut and we're just yeah besties by the end of it so, yeah and that's yeah a- they had a lot of knowledge to bring too like they were super like we're gonna listen to you like tell us what to do type mm-hmm. but then when we got into it like they had suggestions that were really helpful and that ended up changing what all of us did together too so absolutely like yeah come together and work on a group SOPs. Like, I mean, it, it, yeah. it's a, it's a group effort. I mean, everyone goes, it, they we, we come into that. I'm in charge here. I'm the, I'm the, mm-hmm. it's like, dude, I'm like, but you won't be in 48 hours when yeah. it switches to somebody else. And then it so. won't, you won't even be like after your lanes over, you won't be. And it's like, and yeah. again, if you come in with like that, I'm in charge, everybody's going to do exactly what I say. Like, dude, a, we're not really in charge of anybody here. Cause yeah. this is a training this environment. I can't power. article 15 you. So, yeah. uh, you know, if, if people are like, dude, screw this dude. Like, mm-hmm. He, I'm not going to help him get his go. Like, I'm just going to go through the motions, and if yeah. he happens to get his go, good for him. You know, it's like, no, yeah. man, again, keep people motivated. You know, don't be that, that blue falcon that just brings everyone down or is just like, drill sergeant, and I'm going to tell everyone what to do. And a lot of them, like, were those NCOs that they would just get mad. They basically couldn't smoke people mm-hmm. when they were in leadership. And I'm yeah. like, we don't need that. Like, we really don't need that right now. We're yeah. getting it enough from everything else. But I think they just – they found – a struggle in leading people without having that kind of power yeah. over them in the sense of that. I'm like, well, you got to get used to that because you're an officer now. Yeah. So yeah. That's and exactly what that is. Your job's not to smoke people. As an officer, you walk up to your NCO and go, hey, that private, uh, he's uh, he's giving me some strife. Handle it. And no, they're like, like you need to and their sergeant's them. like, I'm on, I'm on it. I'll take care of it. If he yeah. ever says anything rude to you again, I'll take care of it for you, sir. It's like, mm-hmm. boom, that's what you want. But yeah, it's, again, it, the NCOs can really struggle out there because, again, when I was at phase one, like those mm-hmm. guys, like they're like, this is crazy. I've never been treated this horrible. But I guess what I want to ask you now is, what was the attrition rate like from phase one to phase two to phase three? Like, how many people dropped in phase one? How many people dropped in phase two and yeah. got killed by the tests or the, mm-hmm. the runs? And how many people didn't pass in general in so the phase stitch lanes? three, we had 100% everybody made it through, which was really nice. I was really glad everyone passed. Um, and phase one had a lot of people drop i don't know a specific number but i mean it was like left and right we were getting a motivational speech by our commander like every day because people were just dropping and he was like y'all can do this and i was like they couldn't apparently (laughs) but yeah i mean we had first day i remember one in my squad dropped and that's why i ended up having a smaller squad i think three from the platoon total had dropped that day so i mean day one we lost like four or five probably at least from my platoon gosh yeah, so in the whole company, it probably was, like, under 10, but, like, day one, like, you know. And then due to land nav failures, mm-hmm. I think we had two, which is a pretty low number. Yeah, that's the really low. Yeah, because, I mean, we had a lot of retests, but only two that actually went home because of it. And from the four mile, we had everyone pass. We had one get, like, two seconds before, and we were, like, so happy. that We were <laughs> so happy that everyone passed that. So no one left because of that. I think one person left because of academic. So again, like that's for a company, like that's not too bad. No, that's that's actually phenomenal. Most of it was within phase one that people left. Yeah. Not even left, but people that were supposed to be not traditional but accelerated mm-hmm. was like, no, I'm not staying here for this whole time. And yeah. they left. And there's a lot of family issues that made people leave too. Like I don't think all of it was just I can't do this. But um, yeah, I mean there's two people from Oklahoma. Like we went with seven and – graduated five so you know Jeez. yeah no i it, so phase one for us we lost uh we had 100 and we had 70 finished so i think land nav that's is a, what got everybody yeah that's about i think the percentage that mm-hmm. it normally is with 30 percent attrition rate that mm-hmm. kind of makes sense and then phase two it was actually for our class specifically since there's only what there was like nine of or ten of us or whatever at the mm-hmm. beginning and then we lost we finished with eight so we lost what Three, we lost two three. or three. Yeah, we lost three. So uh, about the same like wide yeah. percentage of everybody there. So like Oklahoma. Yeah. We went with seven, came back with five. I'm like, okay. I mean, most of us. Yeah. It was actually mostly gold that ended up finishing. Oh, so I mean, and, and that was the thing. Like when we had uh, Babbitt come back in because he was gold, and then he went to uh, accelerate and came back because he didn't make it through phase two. Uh, I mean, we leaned on him a lot. For a lot of information, like, because he'd be like, Cause "Oh, I've done, a, there, I've done a mock you know? dine-in before." Like, you've done a mock dine-in before? Like, well, from, that was from being in gold. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so it's like we'd sit there and be like, "Wow, you've done a mock dine." I, we've never done a dine-in, so we're at the ask you a bunch of questions about how to do this so well, gold then, does then a really good job a lot of the stuff that we did was completely different it's like i've never done that <laughs> yeah and then so we would yeah we leaned on him hard like going so you've already almost gotten through phase two so we can ask you all these questions mm-hmm. and like 
we would be doing our cub briefs or we'd be doing like mm-hmm. uh what our uh, oe operational environment briefs and mm-hmm. things like that and then he bad would be like I, I don't know what any of this stuff is. Like, you, yeah. like you're looking at me like, I don't know what you're talking about right now Yeah, either. I think everyone does it a little differently. Like, we do do OE briefs in gold now, mm-hmm. but that's because, like, we kind of started that when we got back from mm-hmm. OCS, or we started, like, history briefs and stuff. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I mean, I feel like the gold programs probably do small things differently. I'm not sure how long Babbitt was in the program because he wasn't in when I joined. Yeah. So that's how, like, short of a time period I guess I was there is just, like, we had right at the switch. But yeah. Yeah, and that's I like again. I wasn't even in the pre OCS, but I was at the pre OCS for three drills, and then it was like, mm-hmm. congratulations, traditional, traditional start, and here yeah. we go. Like, so the only thing that I really took from it was the land nav stuff that we had, which thank God we did because I didn't get a heck of a lot of land nav at yeah. uh, basic land, training. Land nav was a lot at OCS, like accelerator, because we did the night and the day. Did y'all do that too? Yep. Yeah, because I switched that recently to being separate things. I knew it used to be together. Um, but I mean, a lot of people struggled with it. I. We did really well, all of gold. I think we all got seven out of seven on both of them, but it was because we've done so much land nav before Mm -hmm. and just had that experience, but a lot of people did it, and so there was a bunch of people that struggled with it. You only had to get four, I think, to pass, like four points out of seven. So a lot of people passed, but just didn't. Four out of seven? Yeah, I think so. We had to do five. Maybe it was five. If you got missed one, you could survive, but if you missed two, bye-bye. Retest or your... It probably was five then. Okay, yeah, I was about to say, that's a lot. The practice, we only did five points, so you had to get four out of five to gotcha. get Gotcha. Yeah. That makes sense. But, uh, yeah, so then phase two, the attrition rate, Welly, wasn't too bad for you. Most wasn't people... You know. There was a few here and there. It wasn't even due to, I think, OCS, more so family, like yeah. personal. That makes sense. But, yeah, we had a, a couple of guys fail the history test, and that was it. There was no... They didn't pass, and they pa- didn't pass the retest, and they were gone. So we lost three, and then it was just... Which one was technically family issues? She it was our only female. She didn't want to be she, there anymore. She just didn't want to be there anymore. She yeah. wanted to go home and be with the family and stuff. So, yeah. Uh, and then yeah, the other two really had a hard time passing that test. Um, so they probably should have done a better job getting in study groups and stuff. But again, outside mm-hmm. of drill, it's one of them's a home you know. builder, you know. So he's tired at the end of the day. It's like mm-hmm. when you get done building the house or renovating something. Right. It's like, do you really want to come home and go open sleep. up a test yeah. and but... start studying? You know. Two semesters of collegiate military history in two cool. days. Like, like it's a whole class. Like yeah. that's an entire semester's worth of. Yeah. So there's like it's really not fair, but I mean like the, the cadre did give us really good study materials for outside of drill, but it's just you know even then it's just like dude this you is so do much. So anywho, but yeah, then phase three nobody failed for you no guys though. No, 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 yeah, no, no. and that's pretty similar to us. Like we only had one person fail in Washington, and it was like an E seven from California that did not make it. So yeah, you're yeah. just like dude. Like I guess his job must have been like forty two alpha or something. Just something un- completely, yeah. completely unrelated. So yeah, I don't know, but yeah, sounds like it's not too different. Like it, it, the the structure of OCS mm-hmm. doesn't seem to change. It seems like it's all there. Yeah. It's just. The, the only difference is are the, the same, just different, just different time, time requirements. Period. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that's that's really cool. That uh, it's all there's the universal brotherhood or bond <laughs> right. between the uh, the OCS uh, environment. So that's really yep. neat. Um, so I guess we'll just kind of wrap up here and say, so what is your plans for after you graduate OCS? Like, I mean, obviously mm-hmm. you have to go to iBullock at some point, but or right. not iBullock, Bullock, Bullock, whatever yeah. your Bullock is. But uh, what is your plan? So, I mean, what do you want to do outside the military? How mm-hmm. long are you planning on being in the National Guard? And what's the goal? So, I branched um, logistics. I'm quartermaster because okay. I switched from infantry. Um, and then I'm going to rebranch to medical once I get into medical school. So, I graduate in May from Rogers with my bachelor's. And then I will take like a year so I can go to Bullock. I'll go to logistics Bullock, which is in Virginia. And I think it's four months long. So, I'll go there. And then graduate from there. I'm a PL at uh, 777 in Ulfmogi. Okay. So I'll be there for a little bit before I apply to med school, get into med school. And then I'll switch to medical and go to med school. Hopefully at Baylor. So I'll probably transfer states down there. Oh. I'll be in Texas for a while. That'd be cool. Yeah, that's the plan. And then eventually I want to switch to surgeon for Army. But that'll be be way way down the road. Down the road, yeah around 30 by that point before i get to do that but yeah hey but if you're planning on doing your 20 might as yeah, well might so. as well. that's what i'm saying i was like well i'm gonna be in for 20 so i got till i'm 38 anyways at least perfect heck yeah well thanks for being here shaley it's uh it's been enlightening and really fun so uh this is the twins with the grand old time cast thanks for watching be sure to like share and subscribe Hurrah!